are you freezing right now? Absolutely. Should we get Taco Bell? We already got Taco Bell. better idea. So there's another little uh, short film for you shot on the Sony a7 IV. If you didn't catch the reference, I don't blame you. I don't think a whole lot of people saw this movie, but a movie came out in 2020 by Charlie Kaufman called I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I'm thinking of ending things. Huh? What? Did you say something? I don't think so. Weird. I will fully admit that this movie is absolutely not for everybody. You might watch it and say this is a cinematic masterpiece. You might watch it and say I have no idea what the hell I just watched. But I'm a big fan of pieces of work that propose that concept. The idea that some people might fully love this thing or some people might fully hate it. There isn't really this like instant commercial appeal to it, like something like a Marvel film or something like that, right? Basically it forces you to think and that sometimes is off-putting for a few folks and that's totally cool. And it's been a theme that I've had with a lot of my short films where you might look at it and be like, that's hilarious, that's so funny, I totally get this. Or you might look at it like, this guy's fucking crazy, what the hell is he shooting? This is a complete waste of my time. Just accidentally wasting it. And I have no hard feelings towards either side of those cam. And so if you're not on my wavelength, I can't bring you onto my wavelength. Putting the themes and the story aside with I'm thinking of anything, focusing in on the cinematography, theme on this channel, I do really love 4.3 pieces of work, and this is another one that is shot in 4.3. This one was shot on the Sony Venice, so I thought also that was kind of fitting because I shot this with the a7 IV, and so we'll just keep this in Sony land. But one of the things I really like about the cinematography in I'm Thinking of Ending Things is that even though it's digital, there is a bit of a film tone to the images. It doesn't look like film, but it has a film vibe and an emotion around film, particularly with the tone of the colors. And a lot of that is coming from the set design. It's not necessarily the color grading, which is doing a lot of heavy lifting too, but most of it is really from the set design and the colors that are actually in the frames. It's like why I wore an orange jacket in the short film. It's like, I have tons of jackets, but I wanted to wear an orange jacket because I knew that would pop better on screen. And so beyond just the production design and wardrobe of having colors in the frame that I knew would help, I wanted to push this even further when I got into post and really give it a 16 mil Look, the reason I wanted to go with a 16 millimeter look is for another reference. So I had recently watched Spencer in theaters and I absolutely loved how this film looked in 16 millimeter. I think the wide angle lenses as well is such a really cool look coupled with the 16 millimeter film. And the thing about 16 millimeters is there's a texture and a grain to it that you really just don't get with 35 millimeter. So I really kind of wanted to try to replicate that feel in conjunction with the 4.3 kind of look and pastel vibe of I'm thinking of ending things. And thus we had this little short film about Taco Bell drawing from those two references. So context aside in that whole short film, I wanna talk about how I actually emulate that 16 millimeter look and how you can emulate a film look yourself regardless of the camera you're using. Again, I use the a7 IV for this, but you could use pretty much whatever camera you want, which we'll see in a moment. And I'm using a plugin called film box. Here's the thing, I've gone down the rabbit hole of film emulation from LUTs to Dehancer plugin, all these different sort of emulations that are out there. Personally speaking, in my humble opinion, I do think film box is the best of the best, mostly because A, it looks good and B, it's just so damn easy to use that I think it's hard for me to recommend any other plug-in because this one just works so damn well. I'm not sponsored by Filmbox. I don't even know these people. I just personally started using the plugin. I paid for it and I've got all my money's worth out of it. I absolutely love it. And so that's my bias towards this. I just really like it. This is also a plugin that I use for a lot of my photography. So beyond just getting the film look for your videos, this will also help you get the film look for photos too. And just before we get onto the computer and show you how this thing works, I want you to kind of think about this as 
a look. We're not talking about recreating film exactly. Yes, you can get really close. We know that people like Steve Yedlin and you know the stuff that he's done with Ryan Johnson and how he gives digital footage a very film-like look to the point where I think it's actually indiscernible from film. You can do that with Filmbox, but I don't think that's my objective. My objective here is just to give an aesthetic and a vibe that I'm personally going for, not that I'm trying to show you that it's the exact emulation of film. So go at it subjectively instead of objectively. Go at it with the intention that you want a look that you're trying to achieve. Don't go at it with the idea of I need to replicate this thing exactly. The same thing we talked about with inspirations for shots and cinematography and filmmaking. Go at it and then put your spin on it and put your sort of flavor and taste towards it. Don't go at it, I'm doing a shot for shot recreation remake of this thing because then I don't think you really grow as a creator you're just becoming a really good copycat right and so if you do it and you go at it with your own intentions I think you'll have a much better time filmmaking and in particular with this plugin so let's hop on to the Mac mini and I'm going to show you how Filmbox works hello and welcome to my Mac mini so I'm going to put the screen up and put myself in a little bubble in the bottom corner maybe I should have prefaced this a long time ago but uh, Filmbox is only for Resolve but I'm someone that edits in Final Cut. So what I will usually do is do my full edit Final Cut and then I'll just bounce out a ProRes 422 still in log or whatever, throw it over to Resolve and then do my grading in here and then do the final export for delivery within Resolve. Resolve is honestly just a better platform for color grading in general. So you can use the free version with Filmbox. So if you just wanna pick up Resolve for color grading, I highly recommend it, particularly if you really wanna use this plugin because guess what? This plugin is only for Resolve. Okay, so as you can see here, I already have my export from Final Cut into Resolve now, still in S-Log3, which is what I shot in. And so once you're in Resolve from wherever you've exported, if you've edited in Resolve, even better, but if you've put your render from Premiere or Final Cut into Resolve, you're gonna have this log image in your timeline. And all we need to do now is go into our toolbox here. We've already installed Filmbox. I'm just gonna drag this right over on top of the clip. And immediately it's gonna apply a look. It's gonna be the wrong look, but it's gonna apply one anyway. So all you have to do is go over to the effects panel here. And now you have this whole film box UI, and this is all the controls that you need for film box. So even though there's a look applied here, we need to set the right input gamma for the look itself. And what that means is telling it the source of the footage. So we shot in the A7 IV and S Log 3, but if you shot on a red, black magic, Canon, Panasonic, all that kind of stuff. All of them are listed here. If your camera's not listed here, sorry, your SOL, I'm just kidding. You can still play with this plugin. You can find a profile that's probably relatively similar, but I'm not sure what camera you'd be using that isn't already supported by Filmbox. So like I said, we use S-Log3, so we're gonna put it into S-Log3, and that's just gonna make sure that everything that we apply moving forward is tailored specifically for the camera that we shot on, and in particular, the color profile that we shot on, which is S-Log3. So right away, even just putting this on, I mean, that's a fairly decent, nice looking film look, like right? right there, just turn key, drag and drop, all of a sudden you have a LUT applied, essentially, with grain and halation, all that kind of stuff, applied to your footage as is. And if I really wanted to, I could just leave this thing like this, and I'd probably be very happy. But what's so great about Filmbox is the customization. So like we talked about, you wanna tailor this to the look that you're going for. And I was in particular going for a 16 millimeter look with this short film. So I'm gonna go over to the negative tab here. I'm gonna switch this to 16 mil, and right away you'll see the grain gets a lot more grainy. So right away, if I go from 35 millimeter to 16 millimeter, you can see that grain in the details in particular right around here. Watch when I go to 35, that cleans up quite a bit. So we want that 16 millimeter grit that we get from 16 mil on our footage. So we're gonna make sure that our negative gauge is 16 millimeter. Now the stock is where you're gonna get into all your different colors, right? So here's 250D, you can go into 500T. They're all relatively like small adjustments in color in between them. But if you're looking for it, you will notice the difference. So I would recommend just playing with these and deciding which film stock you wanna use. I like to use 50D or 250D. The dust and weave is actually all the sort of like little imperfections that get applied to film. Sometimes I don't actually like to use that because sometimes I'm gonna make the footage just a little bit too film-like and I don't really want it to, like we said, I don't want to really emulate film so much as I want it to give myself a film look and a vibe. I don't want the BS that comes from film, like, you know, jitters and stock and, you know, warping and all that kind of thing. I want it just to look good. What's also really nice is there's this camera setting so I can actually change my exposure within this and I can change my color temperature as well. Now we didn't shoot this in raw, but even for a compressed format, this is H.265 out of the A7 IV, I do have quite a bit of control over that white balance 
for this image. And I kind of want to lean this one a little bit more warm. And then if I get into the tint here, I can obviously go more green or more magenta. I tend to go a little more green with my stuff, but again, that's all personal taste, personal preferences. The advanced setting is where you're going to get into even more of your tone, your color. You can even mix match stuff. So if you want to change the film stock, even within here, you can still do that. I'll leave it in the 50D. Your halation comes into here. Again, there's not a lot of like specular highlights within this footage itself to see that. When we get into the photo side of this, I'll show you how the halation really works. Grain is all set up right here as well too. I can increase that strength and make it crazy. I can go simple. On my short film with the cheeseburger, I use film box, but I actually applied no grain at all because I wanted a film tone and color. So this almost ends up being like a really nice Rec. 709 kind of feel. Not essentially Rec. 709 because it is very film-like, but it applies like a LUT, but you don't need all the imperfections and grain from film. You can just add the color that you want and just leave it there. So for me, like I said with this, I wanted this to have that 16 millimeter look. So I do want the grain here. So I'm gonna put that probably around there so it starts to look nice and messy. And I'm happy with that. Again, just like we said with the film, you can apply more or less with whatever you want. And the gate weave is basically like how the actual film would have gone through the camera and how it would have moved within that camera itself. And you can see the more I add, the more it starts to sort of distort and warp a little bit. And that's just from that imperfections of the real film stock. And that's something you would probably wanna play with if you really do wanna go down that path of very nostalgic, retro, real film aesthetic. But essentially that's it. That's how easy this plugin is to use. You can see after we've made all of our little changes, again, I can play with exposure a bit here still if I want. But once you're off and you're on, it's so turnkey and simple. This is why this is my favorite film emulation. It's such a what you see is what you get type editor. It's like Squarespace for film or something, not sponsored. But I just like the simplicity. I like that it's easy to use. I'm not an expert in color grading. I'm not an expert in post-production. I wanted something simple and easy to use that is very high quality and professional. I do really think Filmbox is offering that. So if your camera is supported and if you want to start dabbling in Resolve, I highly recommend this for your video footage. Let's hop over to photos. So I already set up another timeline here. These are just JPEGs straight out of my a7 IV. Like literally I've done nothing to these files here. This is just a JPEG out of the a7 IV. I've set it up in a, in a 285 uh, aspect ratio just to kind of give it that cinema feel. But if I go into the effects here, you can see when I turn Filmbox on, boom, right away we already have this sort of like Cinestill 800T vibe going on just from playing with all the stuff that we talked about that we played with on the video side. Like same thing here, I can play with exposure, I can play with my grain, my temperature, all that kind of stuff. And this is where the halation really comes in to help with giving yourself that film look for photos. You know, if I turn this halation off, you'll see, especially within like the specular highlights over here, when I turn this halation on, you're gonna see that glow kick in, which is something you would see with real film, in particular, 800T Cinestill, which a lot of people love to shoot with. It's so expensive though. And again, I'm just not that into film anymore. I like the look of it. But here, again, I'm in a 35 millimeter full frame mode, which is what my camera is. And I can play with this halation now, the strength of it. So if I don't want it so crazy, sometimes you don't wanna go that overboard. You can go extreme with it too, and it starts to look fake. So all of this is about experimenting and just dialing into the settings that you like in particular for the look that you're going for within the footage or the photo in this case. But the same principles apply to the video. We're just playing with all these different tools here in film stocks to get what we want out of our images. And that's why I love this. It's just so simple and easy to use. Even the halation, you can change the color of your halation. You can make it more green. You can make it more red. You can make it more blue. All this stuff just makes it very, very easy. And so what I'll do is once I actually get a look that I like, this is fine. I'll just copy this look and apply it to another photo. I already have one applied here already, but you can see once I take that look, I paste it to this one, and now I have the same look applied to all of my photos. So this is a full set that I have already shared, and it's done. So right there is before, and that's after. Here's another one. This is before, and that's after. You can see right away, it looks like film. I mean, that's the whole point of this, right? It's like using Lightroom, but within Resolve, right? Again, before, after, before, after. Super easy, super simple. That is Filmbox. I'm gonna put a link to Filmbox in the description. I don't really wanna talk about the price too much. You can kind of go down that path <laughs> on your own. There is a free light version that does give you a lot of the tools here that you would wanna play with. I recommend just trying with that first and experimenting and having some fun. And then if it's something you really like, go down the path of purchasing it. Obviously, I highly recommend it. I think it's great. I think it's super easy to use. Great for short films, great for client work, great for photography. It's just great. Everything's great. Look how easy things are getting for us to make things now, right? 
You just bop around with a little mirrorless camera and you got the look of professional film. What more can you ask for, right? Hope you like this video. My name is Patrick Tomaso. If you have any questions about anything we talked about this video, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, you will see or hear me next time I feel like making a video. Peace out. You're gonna learn to look beyond what got you back. You're gonna see the way a man should treat a lady. You're gonna know the one I yell at in the sky. Who gives a damn about money? Are you actually freezing though? My ass is gonna be black later because of the frostbite. <laughs>